By now, we have all seen the world of swimming being shaken by Pan Zhang Le's gold medal and world record in the 100 meters freestyle during the Olympics at Paris 2024. That led to the doping allegations by Brett Hockey on Australian elite swimming coach, amongst many others, and the Chinese swim team fresh and vocal position towards media coverage of these accusations. We are going to talk about all that and the factual different treatment that Weta and IOC have given to American athletes that were caught cheating yet allowed to compete. Think of Simone Biles. Hello everyone, my name is Fernando and welcome to my channel. A quick reminder that I post this exact same content in Spanish. So if you wish to forward this video to a relative who does not speak English, use the link in the title of this video. Thank you very much. So last week, Pan Zhang Le from China swam a 46.40 to win gold at the 100 meter freestyle final at the Olympics. He finished a whole second ahead of Australia's Kyle Chalmers, who took silver with a time of 47.48, followed by Romania's David Popovich in bronze medal position with a time of 47.49. Incidentally, Pan's new mark lowered his previous record, which he had set at the 2024 World Championships in a 4x100 uh, meter freestyle relay by a full four tenths of a second. His gold medal victory also represents a first ever medal for China in the 100 meter freestyle. On a personal note, I particularly enjoyed the CCTV commentator coverage of Pan's win. Now, the first thing I noted when I was watching the replay was that Chalmers appears to be saying doping to Popovich after looking at the times on the board. Watch here. Some people suggest that he's just saying, hey, good job, although he's clearly not talking to Pan. And I'm no lip reader, but as a language teacher, that surely looks like a voice dental plosive D. And then uh, I also saw Brad Hockey, a, the former competitive swimmer who represented Australia at the 2000 Summer Olympics and the 2004 Summer Olympics, and then became a coach and later on a United States citizen. Talk waited, right? So he took to social media and posted this. Because you don't win 100 freestyle by a body length on that field. You just don't do it. It's not humanly possible to beat that field by a body length. That's not real. You don't beat that field. Kyle Chalmers, David Popovich, Jack Alexi, you don't beat those guys by one full body length in 100 freestyle. So basically he's claiming that Pan is either not human or he is cheating. We know he's human, so what does that mean? I reflect on his post saying two things. One, if you do not believe that that time is humanly possible, who will hire you as a coach in the future knowing that you have that mental limitation already? Funny enough, here he is discussing how a 45 second swim would be possible. So perhaps this is about racism? Now that we all need to start thinking about the possibility of a 45 second 100 freestyle. And my second thought on hockey is that his thinking reflects so much of the looser Western brainwashing that we see every day. He could actually be speaking about every and any measurable metric of development in China. To most Westerners, it just it cannot be real. None of this is stuff that you see right here can be real. So that clip is a little nice window into the mind collapse of many in the West. But let's talk now about the facts that refute allegations of doping. Pan Zhang Le has been tested 21 times so far this year, according to World Aquatics Database. All of them have come out negative. The doubts that have been casted by Brett Hawking and many others in sport media like this La Monica from Spain seen here, build on a case of 23 Chinese swimmers who tested positive for trimetazidine in 2021, a case that was clear by the World Anti-Doping Agency, WADA, and it was determined basically that it was due to food contamination. The investigators found traces of that substance in the meat that they ate, the sink and the counters of the restaurants where the team had a meal together prior to the positive results uh, on the test. So, WADA clears them with evidence, but the talking point has already been created, right? So what does that say about the obvious racism of the coverage by media? A quick look at the propensity of doping by a country according to anti-doping testing figures, the Testing Authority report from WADA, you can see that American athletes test positive nearly six times more than the Chinese athletes, even though they are tested almost two-thirds less than the Chinese. Look at South Africa. They test positive nearly 15 times more than the Chinese with one-tenth of the samples that are taken. So I ask, where is the outrage? 
Where is the media casting doubt on any success by the American team or the South African team? If you do not see the discriminatory coverage of doping scandals in media, it's because you do not want to see it. But perhaps more upsetting is the unfair testing frequency and the high ratio of exemptions for certain medications in the US. Since January 1st, 2024, the swim teams competing in Paris have been tested an average of 3.4 times, while Chinese swimmers have been tested on average 21 times since January 1st, 2024. Even during the Olympics, the Chinese diving team's frequency and scheduling of testing has caused failures to perform at their best due to being tested seven times a day, starting at 5 o'clock in the morning and ending at midnight, which obviously wrecks the sleep time necessary for athletes to rest and, and perform well over several days. And of course, the other teams are not tested as often and are allowed proper rest. And then there is the misuse of therapeutic use exemption or TUEs by the US athletes, which are intended for those who are genuinely ill. According to the WADA official website, a TUE allows athletes to receive treatment for medical conditions, even if that treatment involves a prohibited substance or, or method, without the threat of sanctions. This practice is considered standard, it's normal. However, to protect the privacy of athletes, their applications are not met public, which unfortunately opens the door for many athletes to legally use performance-enhancing drugs under the supervision of their doctors. Now, in 2016, the Russian hacker group Magic Bear breached onto WADA's database and discovered that in 2015 alone, 653 American athletes applied for immunity, with 402 of those requests being granted, an approval rate exceeding 60%. Now, in comparison, despite having a similar number of athletes, only 54 Russian athletes applied for immunity, resulting in a mere 37% approval rate. Chinese athletes fare even worse with only a single-digit number receiving exemptions. Reports suggest that the U.S. leads the world in both the number of approved TUEs and the duration of extensions that are granted. There's a reason why the U.S. swimming team is known as the asthma team and the U.S. gymnastics team is known as the ADHD team. Take American gymnast Simone Biles, for example. She tested positive for methylphenidate in August 2016, yet she was not suspended and went on to win four gold medals at the Rio Olympics. Yes, she celebrated. She was allowed also to take amphetamines in 2012, 2013, and 2014. But in general, what is on display here for the world to see is the ugly racism and discrimination that is faced by Chinese athletes at the Olympics. Let us take a look at a couple of examples here. After Chinese divers Zhang Hongtang and Chen Yuxi won the gold in women's synchronized 10-meter platform, the bronze-winning British team simply bypassed the Chinese duo and congratulated the DPR Korean silver medalist, leaving everyone with this huh face that you see on the screen. Now, in another incident of systematic, terrible sportsmanship, Leo Marchand ignores a Chinese coach handshake after the medal ceremony. Yet, here's another instance of blatant aggression by sore losers against Chinese athletes. The Paul Iga Swiatek hit Zheng with a tennis ball at full speed during the match that ended with Iga's 25-match winning streak being broken. Zheng Qingwen, who is known as Queen Wen because Westerners don't know the sound Q makes in Chinese, Qing sounds like Queen to them, I guess. But anyway, Qing Wen went on to win gold by beating Emma Navarro who during a handshake after the game told Jen, I do not respect you as a competitor. That is not the Olympic spirit. But are these athletes reprimanded? Of course they're not. Now, the only positive out of this unfortunate situation is that Chinese people are becoming aware of how the world treats them, how the world sees them. For a long time, Chinese have been very polite and warm-hearted. These newer generations of Chinese are speaking up. Bang Zhang Le did it. He mentioned how his fellow swimmers wouldn't shake his hand and some would intentionally splash his coach. Chinese swimmer Zhang Yufei questioned Western media outlets as to why Western athletes such as Phelps or Ledecky are not questioned when they perform so well, but Chinese athletes who win medals should be questioned. I would like to leave you with two thoughts here. I think that I speak for everyone when I say that Nobody's calling for the end of testing or, or to allow doping at the Olympics or any international competition for that matter. What I, I and many 
are asking for is fairness, and also fairness in coverage. Headlines like that one from Marca from Spain are without a doubt racist. To write that Chinese swimming remains under scrutiny after a scandal involving 23 of its athletes was uncovered in April, when they have already been cleared, it's inexcusable for a sports publication. They dedicate themselves only to sports. And of course, it is also inexcusable for political publications like Foreign Policy, claiming that Chinese athletics no longer signal openness to the rest of the world. What, what does that even mean? But when you realize who the author is, then you begin to understand. James Palmer. He worked for Global Times here in China for 15 years as a copy editor in Beijing. As is conventional in today's climate, he has long discarded any sympathy or nuance he may have had for China and its people, and he went full throttle anti-China in recent years. Just take a look at what he posted just a couple of years ago. That's sad, isn't it? All right, friends, thank you very much for watching today's video. See you tomorrow when I will talk about the U.S. $35 trillion debt and what it means for a world that trades in U.S. dollars. Also, the wiping of $2.9 trillion in the stock market. I'll also introduce you to an interesting concept that we all need to understand, which is the store value of the U.S. dollar. So if you're interested in this kind of topics, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button as well. That way you will be notified whenever there is a new video out. So take it easy for now and until I see you again, bye-bye.